Thank you, friends. Thank you so much for taking time to watch these YouTube clips. And I pray you're really enjoying these brief messages. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so that you can view so many other brief messages which I'm sure will help you in your spiritual life. But today I want to talk about a very practical subject, a subject called making decisions in our life. Making decisions in our life. It is said either knowingly or unknowingly, either consciously or without our mind properly thinking, we make automatically between 30 to 35,000 decisions every day. Isn't that fascinating? Friends, do you know your life and my life is the reflection of the decisions we have made during our life. So make wise decision, make smart choices in your life so that you will lead a successful life in this world. Now, talking about making good decisions, wise decisions, the Holy Bible speaks so much. It gives us so many principles and so many truths how cautious we must be when we make so many decisions or certain important decisions in our life. I have listed the various Bible principles, all taken from the book of Proverbs, and you will be amazed to what extent the Holy Bible has gone in detail to make sure we make right decisions in our life and to live a blessed life. Please take some time and go through the scripture verses so you will be amazed to know how these wonderful guidelines given by the Holy Bible can make such great difference in your life when making important decisions in your life. Please take a moment. I give you so many scripture verses from the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom. I have also to summarize all what the Holy Bible has said into main points. So that at a quick glance, you will know the guidelines when making decisions in your life. Number one, please make your decisions prayerfully. The important decisions in your life, please make it prayerfully. Always remember, decisions have consequences. Very important. Good decisions have good consequences. Bad decisions have got bad consequences. There are times it is good to consult certain important decisions with experts, with wise people, so that you will make right decisions in your life. Always make sure that decisions what you take complement with the Word of God. Never make decisions which contradict or conflict the Word of God irrespective of the benefits you may derive from such decision. There are times you must learn to say no. Do not be intimidated. Do not be pressurized. Do not be imposed by others making decisions for you. Make sure if you're not happy, it is better to postpone a decision than to regret our lifelong. And friends, always, once you make decision, make sure the decisions what you take in your life brings you peace. You have an inner peace with you because certain decisions can only take a second or so, but it can have a lifelong repercussion. But today, I want to talk about a beautiful story which happened many years ago, possibly thousand years before Christ. A true story, a fantastic story which teaches us the importance of making right decisions in our life and what happens when we make wrong decisions, especially the impact of our wrong decision, how it can affect so many others around us, especially our family. I'm talking about the book of Ruth, the story about Naomi, Ruth and their family. So I'm going to read only a few verses and I'm sure you're going to really admire the truth from this Holy Bible on the subject about decisions. So Ruth chapter 1 says, In the days when the judges were ruling, there was a period of time in the history of Israel, the judges were ruling or they were, they were governing. There was a famine in the land. There was a drought. 
Now the Holy Bible tells us why at times droughts come to countries. There are various reasons. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah together with his wife and two sons went to live for a while in the country of Moab. They were planning to go and live in this country of Moab only for a while. But what happened? The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of their two sons were Mahonan and Kilion. They were Ephrites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Very interesting story. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died and she was left with her two sons. Now they also married both Moabite women, one named Ophah and the other was Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Mahonan and Kilian also died and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. A tragic story. Very, very sad story. Now I want to stop here. You can please read the book of Ruth. It's only a very short book, very brief book. You can finish it very fast, about 85 verses or so. You will be amazed. So much of truth we could glean from the book of Ruth. Number one, we just heard in this beautiful story about this family. Mr. Elimelech, Mrs. Elimelech, her name was Naomi, and their two sons, Kilion, and of course, Maulan. Now, I want to give you a little bit more detail about this family. Now, in the ancient days, when Jews have names, when the Jewish people have names, their names carry their identity. Their names are like prophetical, and their names carry a blessing as well. This particular man, his name was Elimelech. The name Elimelech means, my God is king. Well, what a wonderful name. So his God is king. Now he lived in this town called Bethlehem. The name Bethlehem means house of bread. And he said he is an Ephraim. Now Ephraim or Ephratim, or that was the other name for Bethlehem, which really means fruitful. And Bethlehem comes under a district or a state called Judah, which means praise. Now see what great or what rich all these names carry. The rich meanings, house of bread, praises, fruitful. Now what happened? His wife's name is Naomi. The name Naomi means pleasant, favor, delight, lovely. What a gracious name. Now the son's name was Maholan, which means sick. Very unusual name. Possibly he must have been a sickly child. And the other boy's name was Kilion, which means failure. I wonder why parents keep such names. But anyway, the story says this particular family, when that country where they lived had famine, they were making a decision. Now, very interestingly, although there were so many others living in Bethlehem, there were so many others living in Judah, None of those families left their family and went away. The Bible is silent. Possibly they all must have lived in their state during the famine. But this particular family, they left Bethlehem. And if you look at the map, they went to a town or a country or a place called Moab. Now if you look at Bethlehem and Moab, it's more towards down, almost 150 odd kilometers away. So they have to travel quite far just to get away from Bethlehem because their country was facing a temporary famine. They could have easily gone towards more towards north, towards the city of Jerusalem, which is only 15 kilometers away. But the head of the house, Elimelech, made a choice. Now the Bible is silent why he made this decision, but he began to take his whole family and go and live in this strange country, Moab. Now, Moab is not a godly country. We all know the descendants of Moab from the book of Genesis we read. They come from Lot through an incest relationship between father and daughter. And the scriptures given many scriptures about Moabites. Don't associate with them. Don't bring them to the temple. So this man who comes 
from such godly heritage because there was a famine he left all the godly heritage he left the word of god he left the praises and came and dwelt in this country a pagan country possibly there were so many pleasures there were no restriction you're free to do so many things because there's no one to supervise you why did this man bring his family and live in this place called moab friends first of all there are times we also have famines droughts in our life if you read in the book of deuteronomy chapter 11 13 to 17 the scripture gives us various reasons why a nation experiences a period of drought famine no flourishment everything is dry even so in our christian life there are seasons we go through droughts that is called spiritual drought suddenly we go through a various time of test trial no joy no happiness as if everything is going against us unable to pray unable to praise no joy in our life those are called spiritual famine spiritual drought our life is challenged by various situations experiences in our life so when we go through such spiritual droughts what are the decisions we are taking in this beautiful story it tells us be careful the decisions you take when you go through challenging situations in life. Don't be like Elimelech because he took his family away from Bethlehem. When you go through these challenges in your life, those tests in your life, those trials in your life, number one, don't leave Bethlehem. Don't depart from the word of God, the bread of life. Don't do it. Many people, when they go through tests, the first thing they do is they stop reading the Word of God, the Holy Bible. Number two, he let Judah. Don't leave praises. Whatever situation you go through, it can be very dry in your life. Don't stop praising God. Don't stop worshiping God. Don't stop reading the Holy Bible. Because, because of these such things we do, Many times we continue to prolong the drought which is only for a short period of time. So here is Elimelech. He took his family and he went there. Isn't it amazing? Sometimes the decisions we take out of desperate situation, when we go through very, very hard times in life, those are the times we have to be very vigilant that we don't make unwise decisions like this man Elimelech. Well, the story says what happened to him, what happened to their family. After some time, the story says this man also died. Friends, the one of the lessons you can learn from this man Elimelech is, I really do not know whether he consulted his wife or whether he consulted anyone else. One of the lessons we can learn from Elimelech is, don't make decision out of self-will self-ego, arrogance. What happened to Elimelech? They are in this strange country. He died. Premature death. And there you find his body was buried in this strange land. Usually Jewish tradition, the men are met, buried where their forefathers' tombs are. But see this man. He lost that blessing. He lost that privilege. Because of his decision, to take his family away from the presence of God made him a tragic end, a premature death. How sad it is. And what happened? Because of that, his wife and his sons left in standard in Moab. His wife became a widow and his sons became fatherless. Many times we forget the decisions what we make, especially as fathers or as parents, the decisions what we take, how much it can affect our family, our relatives, our friends. Never forget, your decisions can impact so many others around us. Exactly in the story of Elimelech and Naomi. But the story goes on to say, these two boys, what happened? Even after the death of their father, they didn't want to go back to Judah. 
they continued to live in Moab. They married Moabitish women, which they're not supposed to do. And friends, there you get another great lesson to learn. Many times children are influenced by the decisions parents take. Many times children copy, imitate, follow the decisions of parents take. When parents make a mistake in their life, innocently children also follow the same mistake. Just like in this story. Here they married and what happened? Maudra married this girl Ofa and he also died. And there you find the certain boy killed you. He also married Ruth and he also died. And how many years have left by? 10 years. They could have easily gone back. The famine did not last for such a long time. But they continued to stay in Moab. They did want to correct the mistake their father made. Friends, that is another tragedy in our life. There are times we don't take responsibility for our mistake. We continue to linger the same mistake we did over and over again. None of the men, none of the boys made up this decision, I want to go back. But sadly, what happened? They both boys died and the story now says, suddenly this home has got three widows. How sad it is. All the men have died. The men who should have done the right decision did not do. They also died and suddenly the three widows are stranded in this home. And now comes the other person in this beautiful story, Naomi. And this is where you learn about the consequences when we make right decisions in life. Naomi decided, I am getting back to Bethlehem. I'm getting back to the word of God. Naomi decided, I'm going back to Judah. I'm getting back to praise. I now we decided, I'm going back to the promised land, the land of Canaan, flowing with milk and honey. I'm going back to the presence of God. Friends, if you want to correct your wrong mistakes, there are times you have to take bold decisions. Don't sit and languish about your past decisions which has brought so many misery. Nothing you can do by talking about your past. You cannot go back to your past and correct those wrong decisions. But you can make right decisions today so that your future can have the right consequences bringing you happiness and joy. Look at the story of Naomi. If she has to go back to Bethlehem, to Judah, she will be facing an embarrassing situation, as if she is going empty-handed. The people of the town, the village, will be looking down on them. It will be very shameful, and she may have to explain to everybody, I lost my husband, I lost my two sons, and now my sons are married to these pagan women. Heart, a big story. It did not matter. She said, I will return to Bethlehem, and I am going to do the right thing. And friends, that is where I'm encouraging you. If you made a wrong decision in the past, make the right decision today. It can be painful, it can be shameful, it can be sad, does not matter. At least your future is going to be changed and bring back joy and happiness in your life. The beauty of the book of Ruth is the eighth book in the Holy Bible which tells you a new beginning. You can always have a new start, a fresh start today by taking the right decisions today. So don't languish about your past mistake. Learn to face shame. Be a person who is able to take up shame if you have done wrong. Learn to say sorry. And the beauty of Naomi is not only she made this right decision to go back, her life had impacted both her daughters-in-law so much. Even her daughters-in-law wanted to come to Israel, come to Judah. What a wonderful testimony this lady led. She was such a gracious lady. Even her words were so pleasant to listen. You read in the book of Ruth, she never addressed her daughters-in-law as daughters-in-law. She referred her daughters-in-law as daughters. 
And when she made a choice to do the right thing, see how we impacted her pagan daughters-in-law. They too wanted to follow their mother-in-law and come to Israel. Isn't that amazing, friends? That is what I always encourage. Many times, your life has to always impact others. Learn to influence others more than impressing others with your words of grace, with your words of positivity, and most importantly, your testimony, your character. It plays such an important role to make right decisions, not only in your life and even in others' life, like Naomi. So what was the consequences? Well, we know as you go through the pages of the book of Ruth, although she had a bad start in Moab, she went back to Israel, Bethlehem, and her end was so blessing and flourishing. And you will also read, when, you went, when she went back to Bethlehem, she did not even go alone. She had somebody to support her. One of her daughters-in-law followed her. And friends, that is the greatest blessing you can have in our life. When you make right decisions, you will always see others are inspired to follow you. Others are inspired to follow the right example you set. Like this beautiful lady, wonderful lady, Naomi. And let's talk here for a while about Naomi. And let us now go and study over the two daughters-in-law. One of the first daughter-in-law, Ofa, she wanted to come to Israel, but Naomi pleaded and said, no, you have a life, you can live in this place called Moab, that is where your family is. And well, reluctantly, she agreed after persuasion from Naomi. And Naomi, after she told this lady Ofa, Ofa said, all right, I'm going to stay in this country of my birth, Moab. That was the decision she made. Well, what happened next? That is the final we hear about Ofa in the Holy Bible. And with that, her decision to stay back in Moab, there you find Ofa disappearing from the Holy Scriptures. Friends, please remember, the decisions what we make can place a legacy in our life or it can make our life just a vapor in this world. But look at the other doctrine of Ruth. She made a decision. Although Naomi persuaded her to stay back like the other girl, she said, no, I made a decision to follow you and come to Judah. What a great lady Ruth was. We can learn the beautiful verse. Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 is the most important verse in the book of Ruth. Where you go, I go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your God will be my God. Where I die, where you die, I will die and I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me. Friends, the words what Ruth said is similar to a marriage covenant, a marriage vow. A decision she made so boldly, even knowing, even without knowing the repercussions of her decision. And friends, be like Ruth. When you make right choices, right decisions in your life, sometimes we do not know the blessings that is waiting for you and I when we take decisions right, especially according to the Word of God. Well, what happened to the life of Ruth after she took this decision to follow Naomi? Well, please, Read the book of Ruth, you will be fine what her blessings she had because of this decision she made to come to Bethlehem, to come to the land where God was meeting his people. So first thing you read is her decision was wise, even though she would have fully understood the consequences she is going to face. Her choice was exactly according to God's will. Her choice, her decision was made unshakable faith. That is how we should take decision. When we make decision, it must correspond to the word of God. And if it corresponds to the word of God, we must have an unshakable faith. I don't know what consequences my decision is going to make, but all what I know is I did exactly according to the word of God. 
the other wonderful thing you learn about Ruth is she had a teachable spirit. She made her decisions by listening to her mentor. She had a teachable spirit. She was willing to learn, willing to listen. Today, many of us make wrong decisions in our life because we don't have a teachable spirit. We always tend to argue. We always have our logical mind. You'll always find Ruth was an industrious lady. In the book of Ruth, you will see how hardworking she was. Why did she do that? She had a mission statement. What was the mission statement? Do what is right more than looking right. Isn't that interesting? If you read the book of Ruth, you will see that is her life story. Do what is right more than looking right. What a great principle for us to you and I to have when we make decisions in our life. Always learn to make right decisions in your life. And the story goes on to say, all what Ruth did was watched by a rich man called Boaz. And friends, that is exactly what I want to tell you. All what you do is always watched in this world. Whether it is good or bad, whether it is right or wrong, you are being watched. And there this man was, this rich man who later married Ruth, made this great statement about Ruth. Who can find a virtuous woman? Far about rubies in the book of Proverbs. But here in the book of Ruth chapter 3, you will read that Ruth is compared to a virtuous woman or the only virtuous woman in the Holy Bible. Her character was unblemished. And friends, that is the golden principle we must always remember in our life. Whatever decisions you take in this life, make sure your character, your integrity, your testimony is never, never tarnished. That is how Ruth was. That is why she got this wonderful name in the Holy Bible, the only woman sometimes referred as the virtuous woman in the Holy Bible. And friends, I can teach you so many things from the book of Ruth. Now look at the spiritual side of this wonderful story. You had Boaz, the man who later married Ruth because of a decision to follow Naomi, which led her to this wonderful bridegroom who was such a rich man. Then you have Naomi, a wonderful mentor who led Ruth to this glorious life she had. And if you look at this beautiful story, you can complete the story with us. This verse is a beautiful picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Naomi is a wonderful mentor. The Lord has given us the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and of course Ruth is the Gentile bride. You and I, the Lord has chosen us to be His bride. So that tells us, friends, the importance of decision in our life and the blessings we can enjoy when we do right according to the word of God. There are so many life lessons from the book of Ruth. Because Ruth made so many good decisions, we can learn so many life lessons. And friends, it is said, life is our greatest teacher. And the decisions what we make in our life are like lessons for us and also for others to understand the importance of making good decisions. I've listed so many wonderful lessons we could learn from the book of Ruth. And there are times we need to study these lessons so that we too can polish the decisions we make in our life. Although there are about 85 verses or so in the book of Ruth, although Ruth did not speak most of these verses in the Holy Bible, yes, this Holy Bible in this book is named in her honor. Not in the name of Naomi, not in the name of Boaz, not in the name of Elimelech, all the sons. A lady's name was given to this book. Why? The right decision she took in her life. Friends, your decision can transform your eternal destiny. The book of Ruth, there are so many great lessons. I've given you some more of this. Please take your time, go through these lessons and you will be understand the importance of decision in our life.
shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful lesson, Lord, from the book of Ruth. There's so many truths we could glean, but most importantly, the importance of making right decisions. And Lord, we know the most important decision we can make in our life is like Ruth coming to Bethlehem. And Lord, please help us that we will always find ourselves the Bethlehem, the house of prayer, the word of God. We will always come back to the place of praise, worshipping God. And the greatest decision is always to know the Lord Jesus Christ, who is like Boaz for us, Lord. Today I pray, if there's somebody who's watching this YouTube clip, and if they do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior in their life, I pray, Lord, they will call upon you, they will ask Jesus, please help me so that I will make the right decision in my life so that those famines, those droughts, those crises, those depressing moments I go through in my life, I could overcome by making right decisions in my life. Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and also for so many godly people you've given in our life as mentors so that we will always make right decisions in our life for the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube clip. You're going to see our email address coming. Please send us your prayer request. We'll be praying for you. God bless you. Amen. Amen.